Well, hello. I am here today to talk about the Clever Touch interactive flat panel, but in particular, using the Lynx Whiteboard app, which is the program we see running right here on the shared screen. I'm using Champs and the thought of that structure as a way of kind of giving us a context or a focus for this particular presentation. But the tools that I'll be using and showing you how I did them and in the behind the scenes of it a little bit are all things that uh, could obviously be used for any circumstances. So again, Champs is just kind of a little bit of our focus, but uh, Link's Whiteboard and the tools is kind of the meta or the uh, bigger context of what we're doing today. So for those that may not know me, I am Adam Watson. I'm the Digital Learning Coordinator for Shelby County Public Schools. And this right here is my Twitter account. I would love for you to give me a follow if you don't already. So let us talk for a minute here about our options and opportunities that if this Link's Whiteboard was showing a particular slide that may have some opportunities, perhaps in a bilingual way for champs, how the interactive uh, parts and tools of Link's Whiteboard could be a help. So if I'm running this in Link's Whiteboard, uh, first off, I have the opportunity that uh, with the marker function here, I could give a check mark to what particular level of voice we're supposed to have, or whether we are supposed to be asking a classmate, for example, uh, as opposed to your partner or your teacher. But another thing that you can do is go here, and I can move this check mark object and say, actually, we should be using a whisper voice, or perhaps use this object for the same idea as far as moving the icon over to a certain section that's true as of this moment. So you may be thinking to yourself, oh, okay. Well, all that sounds nice and fine, but how did I do it? And so I'm gonna answer that question. The first key thing uh, to keep in mind is that the slides that you're seeing actually originated and were originally created in Google Slides. So, the first point of fact, after I've created some slides, is bringing them into Link's Whiteboard. In order to do that, I am going to first take the Google Slides and go file download PDF so that I have a PDF file. Next, I have to get the PDF file over to my Clever Touch. So that can be done a couple of different ways. You could physically transfer from, say, the laptop to the Clever Touch by putting it on a thumb drive or you can log into your Link's Cloud account and then upload the PDF. And then when you come over here to the Link's Whiteboard, it will be accessible that way. There are options. All right, next, once we have that PDF and it's able to get over to the Clever Touch and it's on the Clever Touch, we can go to the Clever Touch's Link's Whiteboard app and then open from the home dashboard in order to find that PDF. From the act of opening the PDF, it actually, imports in the file. And the thing to keep in mind is, is that however many pages the PDF is, is however many pages are gonna be in the Lynx whiteboard presentation. Five pages, you're gonna have uh, five pages in the Lynx whiteboard, okay? That said, one thing to keep in mind, uh, in case you haven't exported a PDF recently, is that when you take a slide that has perhaps hyperlinks and pictures and different things, the PDF, for lack of a better word, flattens all that digital information. So what happens when it gets brought over to Link's whiteboard is that this slide becomes basically a giant background image that we can doodle and do things to. There are some advantages to that. I can't mess up the copy, for example, in all of this. But the other side of it is, is that what used to maybe be a hyperlink that I could click and touch is not gonna be that coming over necessarily. So just be mindful of those, those functionalities as far as what changes. So next, we're going to choose save as, give it a name, and save that newly created links file to the Clever Touch. We're now in the links presentation mode, right? So they are, we're in the links whiteboard app, I should say. So when you have that, you want to now create a links, a .lynx file. So you would go to the menu, which is down here, and go to save as. Again, give it a name, give it a location that you want it to go to. So while you're in editing mode, you can add objects and make them editable while presenting. And uh, you can add additional pages. You can do all those kind of things because now it's living as a Lynx whiteboard file. In a moment, I'm gonna go out of presentation mode, which is what I'm in, to show you what that looks like, okay? So actually, we'll go ahead and do that now. 
So if I click the menu, because I'm in presenting mode, I'm going to stop. And one thing it's going to ask me is, do you want to save changes made while presenting? Most of the time, your answer wants to be no, because you want the uh, links presentation to default back to the way it was at the start before I started annotating, right? So click no, see how that went away. The tools and some of the features at the bottom shifted because now we're in editing mode. So let me give you an example of inserting something and then making an object editable while presenting. What you need to do is, for example, go down here, hit this button, okay? The things that you saw uh, previously were actually from the content perspective, so hit content. And you can see right where I was before, a box pops up, there is a local content and there is a media search function. The media search is things like YouTube where you can find a YouTube video and drag and drop that in. But what I wanna highlight is the other tab, the tab on the right, which is local content. At the very top of that, you can see here is different folders of clip art, some of which have interactive capabilities, by the way, but that's outside of what we're going to worry about talking about today. What I want to show you is, is that by choosing one of these, and some of these are folders with other things, I went to society, I went to communication, and then suddenly we have some choices. I can just drag and drop one of those objects, okay? And once I'm here and I've selected it, now I have some options. There are different things in terms of what I can do with this particular object from clip art. The key thing I want to show you is back here on the three dots, because on the three dots, I can do several things, but the one I want to point out is editable while presenting. By default, the editable while presenting is off. And when it's off, that means that the object is locked. And that means that when you go in presentation mode, the smiley face, the uh, circle that you inserted, whatever it might have been, Will be stuck, right? It won't move. And there are lots of good reasons why you want that. But if this wants to be an interactive element to move around, like I moved around uh, the speech bubble and the uh, check mark, I want to make sure that I choose editable while presenting. As another example, I'm just going to insert a shape. And I'm going to do this really quick and easy. Let's just make it a star. I'm going to make it orange. And now, there we go. Kind of a lasso trick. I've inserted a star. Now, what I want to point out, there we go, is that I can click, edit some things on that star got the same three dots, but I'm going to let editable while presenting, I'm going to let the default remain. In other words, I'm not going to select or select that button. I'm going to leave it blank. And when you do that, and you go into presentation mode, bottom left, start presenting. Notice it changed a little bit. Now watch. No moving, can't move. Ah. But my little smiley face can move all around. Okay. In addition to that, at the very bottom row here, you can see some uh, different annotation features. We've got some markers and pens. Okay. So this is the marker. We also got a laser light. And that's the one that when you circle or mark or do whatever, it uh, stays for a second and then you'll see it slowly fade away. So that's part of one of the presentation tools that you have when you go into presentation mode of Link's whiteboard. Some of these tools and annotation features are also on the editing mode. The difference being this, if I am in editing mode and I scribble with the red thing and save it that way, that locks in when I go into presentation mode and sticks around. That could be neat if you have something like an animated rainbow tool, for example, you circle a piece of art or circle a particular piece of text, save it that way. And then when you go into presentation mode, the animated quality of the animated rainbow pen remains. You'll see an example of that a little later. So um, back to our point of presentation, okay? So here we were talking about editing mode, adding objects. We were talking about adding additional pages while in editing mode. But once you begin presenting, do your annotation things when you're finished, hit stop. Do you wanna save changes? No. And you can see how, for example, the red scribble went away. Well, the other two things 
went back to where they were at the start. All right. So with that in mind, all right, I'm going to go back into presenting mode and show you another trick, all right? By the way, simple font. This is to illustrate the idea. We probably can make this a little bit more pretty, all right? So I want to point out that we are in presentation mode. And right now, this yellow rectangle is one of those objects that I've created and I've made it where it's editable while presenting. In other words, it can move. Notice, okay, even when I move this away, okay, I'm struggling to do anything except maybe zoom in on the word champ's voice level on that text. Okay, back to the rectangle. So we have it there and we want to indicate okay, what is the voice level supposed to be? Maybe it's no talking or whisper voice. Okay, just talking to a neighbor. Or maybe it's the normal classroom voice, or maybe it's the outside voice for recess. And again, all that is happening in presentation mode. All right, so if I stop presenting, notice it snaps back. And you're probably wondering yourself, well, I mean, how did I do that? So I'll tell you. All right, first off, while you're inside the Lynx Whiteboard presentation, you're going to insert some text, all right? And if you look down here in the editing feature here, you can see that aspect with the T. The idea of it is, is that you can use that lasso, type some words. But the trick is the text must match the background. So if it's a white background, for example, you want to make sure that the text itself is white. The next trick is to insert a shape. So. As we did before, we hit the plus button down here. Oops. Okay, insert shape, the third choice up. Okay, choose something like, let's say, a circle. And change the color if you like. Let's just make it purple for fun. Okay. And now, okay, we've inserted that circle. But then there's an next trick. All right, I'm going to go back to our finger choice here at the left side. Okay, the finger that's sticking up here. We gotta select the shape so you can edit it. So I'm just gonna to touch it, all right? And what you need to do is you need to make sure that the second to last button, which is stacking, transform, and layer, we have to make sure that this last button with the double down arrows, okay, is chosen. Because when we do it and watch what happens, okay? Oh, <laughs> trick. Right now, it's at the back. Well, what happens is the background, like I said, this came from slides, right? You can't go any further into the background because this copy was originally on a slide I brought in. So it's as far back as it can go. The trick is, is that if you had any information that could possibly be in front of it, then it's going to be behind it. And that's how we make the trick. We also have to make sure that it's editable while presenting. In other words, it can move. So that when you do that, that is how this particular item, whatever it may be, let's say this is moved behind some white text, the white text pops out because this purple circle is the backmost layer at that particular moment or backmost stack, okay? Using the word stacking for that. All right. And when you go into the presentation mode, then you can, again, do kind of that magic reveal thanks to the tool. All right. So I'm going to end with just saying that with these different uh, tools and possibilities, if you want more resources about Clever Touch, you can go with this bit.ly. The capital letters count, so make sure you do SCPS in capital letters. And again, notice the animated rainbow ink, which I added while we were still in editing mode. And with that said, I want to thank you for your time and appreciate you watching this video.